Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So I'm trying a few things out today. Here's what I've been up to. I got my stain. It's not actually stain. It's actually leather dye. I believe I showed that in the last episode, but it's this Angelus leather dye. That's a dark red color. And I wanted to see what it looked like on a piece of wood. So I tried that out first. The way it turned out, it turned out super dark. And this is poplar, so you can see the difference in the color already. And I was worried that this dark of a stain on this wood would just turn out to look black. And I don't really want it to look black. I want it to look kind of dark red, maybe like a red wine kind of color. And it may turn out kind of purpley, I don't know. This is the full strength dye. Wasn't real happy with that. So I then started playing around with dilution of the dye. And on this stick here, I've got full strength dye down to different levels of dilution. And I didn't quite like this level of dilution, so I've landed somewhere in the middle. Here's just a few more areas where I was trying out some of this dye on a rough surface versus a smooth surface, just to see if it made much difference. And it doesn't. I was also trying to test my ability to dye on a straight line because on this piece, and I've kind of ruined it now, but on this piece, I tested masking this area between these two dyed sections, and you are not able to mask off a dye. It just likes to leak right under that tape. You can see it even makes a nice nasty looking line on this one here, but that's not gonna be possible. I'm not doing that masking job. So what I have to be really careful of is the neck. I don't know if I'm gonna dye the neck yet because there's a fretboard there and I don't want dye on the fretboard, but I do want it on the neck. So I don't know if I'm even gonna dye it yet. What I might do is just finish the neck natural and then the headstock and go with that. So dyeing the guitar itself, but not the neck. I've seen that look pretty good on a couple of occasions. Uh, another thing I wanted to test was, should I glue the neck on the guitar before I dye it or finish it or after? So what I tested here is two pieces of wood that are glued together at a right angle here. And there's a little bit of a glue seepage. I did that on purpose and I, I wiped away most of the glue but I wanted to see how the dye looked on a glue line. And it actually looks okay, but it's not perfect. So what I think I'm gonna do instead of gluing it up beforehand is dye the body without anything glued to it. It's just, we just dye the body by itself and then maybe dye the neck by itself, we'll see. I tried testing out that solar res and I showed that solar res, which is a grain filler. That's the one I tested anyway. Two things happened. One, it took longer to dry than I thought it would. And it's, I know it's cold outside. It's winter time, February when I'm filming this. And it didn't really dry as quickly as I hoped. And when it did dry, it was a little bit sticky until you sanded it. And then once you sanded it, it looks like this here where it's chalky white. I know I could keep putting more coats on and polish it out, but it wasn't really happy with the way it laid down. It did not fill the grain as much as I thought it should. And it was gonna take multiple, multiple coats. It just doesn't go very far. So I bought these bottles that are about this size. And I don't know, it's a, uh, let's see how many ounces. This is four ounces. I don't think this is enough to do the entire guitar with multiple, multiple coats. So I think I didn't buy enough of it. So I think what I'm gonna do, I don't think I'm gonna use the solar res. And it's mainly because I don't wanna run out of it. That stuff was like 20 bucks for that bottle of four ounces. And I don't wanna just keep dumping $20 bills down the drain as I order more and more of these things. So there's that. And I wasn't real happy with the way it finished out. I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna be like if I finish the entire guitar and try to take that outside in the cold and how long I'm gonna have to stand there to dry it and just, I don't know, there's a number of uncertainties. And on top of all of that, I've contacted the Solaris support about one issue with my order and there's a bunch of <laughs> that work on that company. So anyway, my two cents worth and I'm just not gonna use it. I'll save that stuff for another repair project. I've got that Telecaster with the divots in the finish. So I'm gonna use it for that for sure. And we'll see how that goes. So what am I going to use for the finish on this guitar? Well, another thing I've been testing is tongue oil finish over dye. And actually that works a lot better than I thought it was going to. I thought this stuff was gonna take the dye off, but it does not. Now this is an old bottle of Formby's tongue oil and it's a high gloss. In reality, it does not turn out to be that high gloss. It just comes out really nice, kind of even looking, semi-gloss kind of, you know, not satin, but it's like in the semi-gloss range. And I've got some of that stuff 
on this, which is two coats, and I have not sanded it back or anything, but this gives me sort of a, you know that Les Paul faded kind of look where you can sort of see some of the grain in the finish and it, you know otherwise it's got sort of a semi-gloss. That's kind of what it looks like. And then I've got another section over here where I was testing tongue oil over solar res grain filler and I do not like that look. So I'm cutting solar res out of the mix. I'm gonna go with this sort of finish here. This is the diluted color that I have come up with in the dye. About a one and a half to one Eh, close to two to one dilution of that dye mixed with denatured alcohol basically. I went through a couple different applicators and not all applicators are created equal. I used a boar hair brush on my first attempt and I don't know if you can see this or if it'll show up in the video at all but this is my first attempt and there is a green hue that's sitting on top of the heaviest areas of grain and I do not want that green hue in my mix. It does not look good with that purple. And I, I tested a couple other areas in the middle that actually had green hue on a lighter mix. And I didn't like that either, so I sanded it down. And I proved that when you go back over it with this foam brush, you can get rid of that green hue. But this foam brush does not put that green hue on any of these other areas to begin with. So got to use this foam brush. I'm not using that boar's hair brush. I'm not going to do a final sand to raise the grain or anything. This is an alcohol-based dye. It shouldn't raise the grain all that much. And I'm not going to be mad if some of the grain gets raised anyway because I want kind of a textured look to the finished product. There will be a application of a couple coats of oil, then a sanding process between those. It's not going to exactly be sanding. It'll probably be more like steel wool. It'll knock down any imperfections any high, super high areas, and it'll leave some of that texture in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I think multiple, multiple coats of oil, by the way, those dry pretty quickly. Like the nice thing about tongue oil is it dries within 12 hours and you can do it twice a day and get coats and coats and coats on there. So it's kind of like true oil in that respect. And I've read also that true oil and tongue oil work really well together. And I've actually thought maybe I'll do the neck in true oil. So we'll see. I've got about half a bottle of this stuff left and it's really and truly just a wiping poly. I don't know how much actual tongue oil is in it, but not it's not 100%, that's for sure. I guess where I'm gonna go with this now is I'm gonna start to stain this thing. It's, I mean, I'm already freaked out about it. So if it turns out terrible, maybe I'll just throw this video in the trash and act like I never got this kit, but we're gonna give this a shot. All right, so here's what we're doing. I've got my safety precautions, which is one gloved hand because I'm not touching anything with this hand, just the brush handle. I've got a shop towel in case there's some kind of a, either a spill or I don't know, pooling or something of the dye on the surface and I can wipe it off pretty quickly. I've got the workbench kind of protected with cardboard. So I, I don't know how this is gonna turn out, but we're just gonna go at it. Throw caution to the wind. I've had enough caution already. So let's see how this turns out. Okay, well, this is the back. Um, it's still not dry yet, so I think it's a little bit dark. It will dry a little bit lighter than this. It did seem to raise the grain just a little bit. I don't know if that's something that will recede back where it was or not, but it raised the grain a little bit. It's not a, a big deal at all for what I'm doing here because of the way I'm finishing this. But if you were doing a completely gloss, mirror shiny finish, you know, that kind of thing, I think that would be a problem. Uh, you would actually want to go ahead and raise the grain and sand before you applied this dye. Uh, I gotta let this dry probably, I don't know, it doesn't take long to dry, but it's still wet right now. So I'll let this dry a little while before I try to flip it over and address the back. This stuff, it takes actually what it says on the bottle is 24 hours to fully cure. I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, for the next few hours. I think I'm gonna try to continue on this tonight, but we'll see. And I owe you guys an episode tomorrow, so I'm not sure where I'm going to leave things. Oh, one other thing. I did not show this process, but one thing that I did do prior to starting any finishing 
was I did a little final sanding work inside the cavity that I mentioned that I was going to do just to get the fuzzies out of there. And also I pre-fitted the neck just to make sure it fit right. And I sanded a little bit in the neck pocket to get some of the little fuzzies out of there. So I've got like all these little splinters that I've cleaned out. Everything's kind of final sanded in these areas. And uh, I didn't bother doing anything really to the face or to the sides or to the back. Everything's kind of rough just the way it came from the kit. I'm still making a decision on what I'm gonna do with the hardware and the headstock. Now the hardware that came with this kit is all chrome. I've got some strap buttons that I'm gonna use that are black. Because they're black, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll change some of the other hardware to black. I'm definitely gonna use black knobs and probably black pickups, we'll see, but I'm kind of debating about that too. I was thinking, maybe white pickups with black rings, maybe a white headstock with black tuners and black truss rod cover. Maybe that'd be kind of a cool, weird look. I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but I'm playing with those options right now. We'll see where I land. All right, well, this has not been drying all that long. It's starting to do some weird things around the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the sides and see if I can't even some of that out. We'll just have to see how this works. Okay, well after messing with this for a while, I can kind of tell now what's going to go on. So this stuff, it does run quite a bit just because it's so thin and it's already kind of run onto the front of the guitar a little bit. But what I've noticed as I've been working on the sides, that the sides are end grain and they seem to absorb the dye a whole lot more than the top. And where it's absorbed, everything's becoming extremely purple. And I think that that's just a difference in the absorption of the alcohol versus the dye. You know, I think things are kind of wicking in and leaving some of the pigment behind in weird ways. So when I recoat those areas, they actually work out a lot better. So I'm just going to have to do multiple, multiple coats on this thing. It looks like I'm able to go back and touch up spots without it being blotchy because I've tried that a couple times. The more coats I give this thing, the darker it's going to get overall. But I think that's really just the dye pigmentation on the wood evening out. And everything so far looks okay in my book. It's not perfect. But now that the sides are done, I'm feeling a lot better about how the recoats are going to look. And I can even this finish out a lot more. Well, here's where things stand after things have dried for a while. It's really turning out to be purple, uh, which, you know what, I guess I'm okay with it. I'll just call it the Barney guitar from now on, but it's really, it's got some spots in it where the grain is raised enough that I think it's going to show some of the mahogany a little bit here and there, especially after I start sanding the tongue oil coats. So. This is the back. The sides are going to need more coats. They just keep soaking in that dye and I think they just, they're just going to need more. The front is a bit of a mess right now, so that's what I'm going to turn my attention to next. So let's see how this goes. All right, well, I've taken some risks that I might not normally have taken with this body, but I've actually only got one of these brushes left. And so I'm kind of, I'm kind of putting the dye on thick. I'm also doing that because there were some runs and drips that I'm sure you saw in the beginning. And the thicker I lay it on, the better that looks. So I think the way this dye works is this wood will soak up a certain amount of it. It really doesn't seem to get any darker after a certain point. So at this point, the top here, this mapled top, is a little bit too dark to actually see much of the burl, but I'm actually okay with that. I think what I almost ordered in the beginning was just a solid mahogany kit, and this makes it more hidden, like what it really is. So you'd have to look at it really close, and I kind of like that aspect of it. So I'm just touching up some of the sides. I guess I'll just give it a final coat probably tomorrow, but I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap the episode here. I really appreciate you guys watching this. I hope you keep following the series. Give me a like, give me a comment, and most of all, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys next time.